QuickBooks Online 2023. Add new accounts and opening balances. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online test drive sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito mode or another browser. If using Google Chrome, support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it you can find incognito mode with the three dots and then new incognito window then search for quickbooks online test drive we will be using the sample company to look at the difference between the accountant view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog dropdown and switch between the views on down below. We're going to open up a couple tabs to put our reports in. Right click in the tab up top and duplicate it like we do every time. I'm going to right click the duplicate a tab to duplicate again. As the tab to the right is thinking, I'm going to go to the tab to the left, open up the reports on the left hand side, and then the balance sheet report. If you're in the business view, by the way, that's going to be in the business overview. That's where your reports are located. And then I'm going to go to the tab to the right and go to the reports on the left hand side. This time open up the profit and loss report. Close up the ham boogie up top. I'm going to change the range from 010122 to 123122. Run it to refresh it. Tab to the left and close the booger ham boogie and then change the range from 010122 to 123122 and run it to refresh it. Now we've been putting in balance our beginning balances. Imagine we have another accounting system or had one prior to using QuickBooks. We're entering the beginning balances into the system. These are our beginning balances. We're going to enter them into the system as of the last day of the prior period that was in the prior accounting system, December 31st, 2022. We're going to then start the new data in our system as of January 1st, 2023, moving forward. We started entering the most difficult balances, which are the inventory oftentimes and the accounts receivable and the accounts payable due to them having sub ledgers that we need to be careful of as we enter the data. Inventory, having a sub ledger for the units of inventory, accounts receivable, a sub ledger related to who owes us money, customers, accounts payable, having a sub ledger related to who we owe money to, vendors. Now we're going to enter all the rest of them and we'll give a short discussion on some things you might need to consider with them, but we won't go into them as in as much detail. It should be a little bit more straightforward to enter some of these transactions, the checking accounts, and then we'll enter the furniture and equipment, the accumulated depreciation, the visa, and the loan. Same strategy, we'll enter them one at a time. The other side of the transaction is going to go somehow to opening balance equity most likely to i'm sorry somehow to equity in total most likely these accounts will go to opening balance equity and then we'll fix opening balance equity or the equity accounts to represent the proper uh, amount in equity which should be in owner's equity okay cash account let's open up the cash account now cash has its own kind of special concerns that we'll have to deal with and the concern is going to be for example the bank reconciliation so you can connect it to the bank we're not going to be focusing on bank reconciliations here we will do that in another section or a course later the other concern also is going to be if there's outstanding checks or deposits in the system how is that going to impact our bank reconciliations 
We'll talk about that in the future. We'll run into that problem when we do the bank reconciliations in another course or section in the future. So entering the beginning balance, we have to use this 25,000, even if that balance is different than the bank balance as of December 31st, 2022, which it may be if there was outstanding checks and deposits but I have to use this balance to be in balance, right? And then we'll worry about that issue with those outstanding checks and deposits and we'll get into uh, how to deal with that when we get to the bank reconciliation. So if I go back to our accounts, tab to the left, and I'm gonna go into our uh, chart of accounts. I'll just do this by going to the chart of accounts and I'm gonna hold control, scroll down. It's in the accounting on the left-hand side and then chart of accounts up top. If you're in the business view, by the way, it's going to be under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts on the left hand side. And then you have to open up the chart of accounts. Okay. So now this is our list of accounts that were given to us by uh, Intuit by QuickBooks when we set up our accounts. We have a cash account up top. So you might want to like change the name of the cash account, but we might just use that cash account. That's our strategy. I'm going to use the account if it's there. If I don't like the name, I'll change the name. If there's not an account there, then I'll add an account. So this is the, they put it as their cash on hand account. So, but that's okay. I'm going to say edit. Let's go ahead and edit this one. And then, and then this sub account doesn't matter too much, but I'll just change it to my checking account. And then you might put like the name of your account. You might put the bank name and you might put like the last four digits of the account number or something like that, which is useful for internal reporting purposes because it helps you to locate which account you're dealing with if you have multiple accounts. Although it's a little bit messy for external reporting purposes, but oftentimes our goal is to get the data input as easy as possible here. And then we're gonna go down below. We've got this thing that says start date opening balances. Now you're only gonna use these when you're first setting up the accounts as we're doing here to get those beginning balances in place. So I'm gonna say uh, it's gonna be a beginning balance as of, let's say beginning of the month, let's say other date. And I'm gonna choose the date as has been our, our process at the end of December, December 31st, 2022. So everything is correct as of, the, of January 1st, 2023, opening balance 25,000. And that should allow us when we do the bank reconciliations to have that opening balance be the right number uh, at that point in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it and say changing the type of tax form uh, section of the account may affect your accounting. So I'm gonna go ahead and are you sure you want to? I'm gonna say yes and close this out. So now we've got our account there. If I then go into my balance sheet up top and run it to refresh it, now I've got the cash account, which I'm going to say is my checking account. And then I'm going to go into that number and it used a deposit form. Notice again, I didn't enter a deposit form. I just entered the beginning balance, but it entered it with a deposit form, which makes sense. That's the form you would typically use to increase, you know, the checking account. So that's what it used. There's the deposit form. It put the other side to opening balance equity, which is what we expected closing this out. Other side in the split, also indicating opening balance equity. Back to the report. Then if I scroll down, opening balance equity. There's the other side going into it. And there it is with a deposit form. No impact, therefore, on the income statement. So I don't have to worry about that at all. So that is that one. So we'll get back to that opening balance issue and the bank reconciliation, which is kind of an issue for the first bank rec uh, in a future section or course on that. And then we've got the accounts receivable. We did inventory. We did these two are related to property plants and equipment. Uh, you could call them depreciable assets. QuickBooks generally calls them fixed assets. Now here we already have the fixed assets set up from our prior accounting system. So I'm going to pull it in. I would like to find an account named furniture and equipment. Now note this one represents those large assets, which are building, um, automobiles, furniture and fixtures that we have to put on the books as an asset instead of expensing them when we buy them. And even if you are on a cash basis, you have to do this, which is an accrual concept, if nothing else for taxes generally. Now that means you're going to have to have a sub ledger tracking the actual units of equipment, as well as the depreciation 
and possibly have one on a tax basis method, which is usually different than the book method. Or if you're a small company, you can just depreciate on a tax based method so you don't have different schedules possibly. Uh, but usually since you have to do it for taxes anyways, the sub ledger is often useful to have done in the tax software by your tax preparer. So when you set up these accounts, I would not, if I was, I would use the talk to your CPA and use the accounts that are in the tax software as your guide in terms of what your subcategories will be. QuickBooks adds a whole bunch of subcategories in here, which is not, may not be the best way to go uh, depending on what your needs are. They're a little too detailed or, and, and you might just, again, want to follow the software that you're going to use to calculate your depreciation, which is act, which is often the tax software. We'll talk more about that later, but right now I'll just choose our normal strategy. I'm going to go to the tab to the left and I'm going to look at my chart of accounts and I'm going to try to find one that has an account type of fixed assets and one that has something that's similar to furniture and fixer. And again, you can look how many fixed assets they have. They got building, that's normal land. And then they got all this stuff here, long-term office equipment, computers, copiers, blah, blah. Fur there's furniture, but it's in that subcategory. So, I mean, here's tools, machinery and equipment. So, so they've got a whole lot of stuff, which you might not need this detail in the subcategories, right? Because that might not be how it sorts out when you uh, look at your, your tax returns and your depreciation schedules. You want to make it as easy as possible to tie them out to whatever your sub ledgers are going to be often done by the tax. Okay. I already said that. So let's go ahead and just do use this one. So I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to say edit this and I want to change the name to the name that that I have here. So I'm just going to use the similar account. It's a fixed asset account and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it uh, furniture and equipment. Usually I would call it furniture and fixture as I think what you would call it on tax, but we'll talk more about that later. So it's save under fixed assets and I'm going to call it, uh, that's, that's the tax form section. And then I'm going to say, okay, furniture and equipment. Okay. Description looks good. I'm not going to worry too much on the description. So the main things I need to have right are this one. The tax line could be important if you're if you're using the software to kind of locate your tax line exactly or exporting it to the software uh, exactly. But oftentimes, in my experience, that doesn't like work perfectly. You can have to use the financial statements anyways. So I'm not overly concerned with that line. Uh, although I'm I'm always hopeful that they get that to the point where it is a time efficient thing to do, but I haven't seen it work perfectly uh, and I've tested it out a few times. In any case, then you've got the account name. And so that's what we changed and the description isn't a big issue as well. So I'm going to hit the drop down, and then I'm going to say that the date, I'm going to say other date and I'm going to be picking it up at the end of 2022. And then the amount we said was uh, 75,000. 75,000 and it'll, it'll make a journal entry for that. So I'm going to say save it. It'll probably just use a journal entry form because there's not usually a, a, a good form for this. Uh, meaning, well, I'll, I'll show you here. I'll go to the balance sheet and then let's run it to refresh it. And so now we've got furniture and equipment. Boom. If I go into that, we're building the balance sheet. We can see that we got the uh, journal entry. So notice it used a journal entry unlike every time we did something else where, where they used a form last time they used a bank form and before we saw an invoice used a bill used now it's using the journal entry why because there is no form for for the purchase of equipment that's like a default form if you purchased it without cash like if you financed it or something so that's why because buying equipment isn't something that happens every day therefore it went to the journal entry so if i go into that it's an actual debit and credit type of form that is being used. Okay, let's close that back out. The other side went to opening balance equity like we would expect. So the other side is down here in opening balance equity. So that looks good. Nothing happened to the income statement. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Next is accumulated depreciation. So now that is something that we'll track on the sub ledgers again, but this is the beginning balance. I'm going to go over here. This is, this is how much we've, we've decreased the asset by to allocate the expense to the period uh, applicable. Let's see if they have one. 
It should be also a fixed asset account. So it doesn't look like they have one called uh, accumulated depreciation. So I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna say, let's just add a new one, new. And this is the, notice the method I'm using. If they have an account that's close, I'm gonna use it. If they don't, then, then I'm gonna make, that's when I'm gonna make my own account, right? And so I'm gonna say, this is gonna be saved under, and they've changed, they've changed this kind of layout up a little bit. So you might not be, it takes a little bit to get used to. Hopefully it'll be a kind of an easier layout. It's kind of nice. It's going to be an asset type of account. So that's kind of a generic overarching balance sheet account. And then it gives you basically uh, your drop downs. Now, this is a category of, as of, of asset, the fixed assets. That's kind of like an account uh, type that we're going to have here. And if you wanted to make a sub account, then you can select, you know, an actual account that it would be a sub account of. So we're going to pick the fixed asset. So it's going to go under a fixed asset, which I would call the account type. The tax line, I'm not overly concerned with, but I'm gonna, just gonna call it uh, accumulated depreciation. I'm not concerned with the same reason I, I talked about before, because oftentimes we're just gonna generate the financial statements to make the tax return. If you can export it directly to a software, that would be great. I haven't seen it work perfectly uh, uh, or better than just entering it into the software thus far. So I might test it out again though, because I'm always curious to see if they've improved it. And so I'm going to say account name is going to be accumulated depreciation. I'm not going to put any description. It's not adding a lot of value in my opinion to have a, a description there. So I'm going to keep that as is. And then we're going to say the start date. I'm going to add the other on the date. And we're going to put this to, to the end of last year. Now, this is where the tricky part is because accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, meaning it's like a negative asset. So I would say it goes up, it's gonna be an increase. So I would think it would be a positive, but I think they're categorizing it as an asset. So it's actually kind of like a negative asset. And this is why debits and credits are actually better than a plus and minus kind of system. It gets kind of weird, wonky with the plus and minus, but I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna bet that they're gonna record it with a negative 7,500 which will which will make it a positive amount in accumulated depreciation because accumulated depreciation is a contra asset if that makes sense if it goes the wrong way i'll have to go back in here and adjust it or fix it in some sh way shape or form so there's there it is so now you can see where it, it gives you a little image on the balance sheet on where it's going to populate so this is this is pretty neat that they give you this little preview um it's kind of a kind of a new a newer type of thing here. So I'm going to save it and then we'll check it out. So if I go to the balance sheet and run it again, now we've got under the fixed assets, you can, you can, oh, it put it on there. See, I got it wrong. It put it on there as a positive. So, so I think that, I think it used to be that way. So now you increase it uh, with a with a positive instead of a negative. So that's why it gets a little tricky. I can fix it this way. I can go into it and then it, it entered it with a journal entry. So the journal entry is actually more specific. If I go into the journal entry, I'm just going to flip it now. So I got it backwards. I'm going to say this is, I'm going to change it by making this a credit and this a debit. Okay. And then I'm going to save it and say yes. And boom, so there it should be the right, going the right way, so there it is. And so now I'm gonna go back, and so there it is. So then these two should net out to a negative. So this is the uh, the dollar amount, the cost, and this is what we decreased it by. We'll get into more about fixed assets in a future presentation. The thing that's kind of annoying here is that you'll note that that the accumulated depreciation is above the furniture and equipment, which is kind of annoying because it's in alphabetical order under the fixed assets. You can fix that by using possibly sub accounts, although it's still a little tricky to fix it that way, or you can use account numbers, uh, or you could try to sort your, uh, when, you, when you go to your sorting, you can say you want the totals in uh, descending order. And so that might, that might sort, so that sorted it out that way. So that's another method you can use. We'll get into more of that formatting stuff 
uh, in future presentations. So we'll get back to the beginning balance entries, but there it is. The other side went to opening balance equity, by the way, as we would expect, opening balance equity. Other side washing out to the equity section as we expected. Okay, keep on moving here, keep on moving. So we already did furniture and equipment, accounts payable we did, the credit card. Now the credit card has the same issues as the checking account in that you could have bank feeds related to it. We'll get it, we'll dive into bank feeds later. Other than that, it's, it's you know, the same, it's pretty straightforward to enter the beginning balance once we set it up. So I'm gonna go to the tab to the left. I'm gonna see if they have a credit card type of account. It should be a liability in the liability area. So it should be a credit card type. I don't see one, so I'm gonna add one. So I'm gonna say new, and it's gonna be a liability type, drop down, and then we've got the current liabilities. I'm sorry, that's not, I want the credit cards. So notice they have assets and then they got bank broken out separately because bank has its special needs, even though it's an asset. And then they got, then they've got liabilities, but credit cards is broken out separate because it has its own special needs. Okay, so we'll go to the credit card, save under credit cards, and then I just called it, and then the, the tax category credit card, and then I called it Visa, I think. Visa is the account name, so I'll just, I'll just stick with that. I won't put any further description. I'll hit the plus button as of, and say we want other date, and we'll bring that back to December, and put the balance. This should be a positive liability now. So 1,000, it's a bad thing, but it's gonna be a positive number, credit to, to it. So it's gonna increase with a credit and save it. Boom, should be set up, no problem, no problem. So there it is down here in the liabilities. So it's a credit card type of account, credit card type. If I go to the balance sheet and run it to refresh it, give me something fresh here, people. I don't work with stale stuff. So there it is, the visa, if I go into the visa, it entered that with a credit card expense, which makes sense because that's the type of form you would think uh, to, to enter a credit card charge. Open that up and there's our uh, expense form. The other side went to opening balance equity. Now we've got the same issue with the credit card possibly as with the bank accounts for the reconciliations, although the reconciliations for the credit cards are often easier because we might do those directly with the bank feeds more likely. like because it's quite common. Whereas the cash account, we might still have some issues with just entering our data with the bank feeds. We'll talk more about that later uh, when we get to the bank reconciliation type of area. But the other side went to opening balance equity. Did it not? Right, yeah, it did. Of course it did. Por supuesto. So let's go back then. What do we got? Loan payable, another one. I'm gonna make that other current liability. So I'll see if they have a loan payable down here. If they do, I'll use it. I would think that's gonna be a, a liability type of account. I wanna make it current liability. So tax payable, uh, long-term business loan. So they only have a long-term, I think I'd like to make it, oh, here it is, short-term business loan. Let's do that one. So I can edit that, boom, edit it. And then do I wanna just call it short-term business loan? Maybe I just call it what I had, which was loan. I'll just call it loan payable, loan payable. I'll change the name to what I like and use the account that's applicable, other current liability, loan payable, okay? Going with our standard strategy drop down, And I'm gonna say other date, bring this back to December 31st. And what's in our loan payable account? 22,000. 22,000 credit, 22,000, boom, shakalaka, and it gives you the preview down below, which is pretty neat. I kind of like their new setup, even though I'm not, I think the other, I'm still preferring the other one right now, but maybe I'll, I'm, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. It's not horrible. It's not completely horrible. So I'll scroll down and there's our loan payable. If I go into the loan payable, it entered that with a journal entry. Why? Because there's no normal form to enter in a loan. You could, if you're entering a loan and you got the money, you could use a deposit form, but there's no, 
entering a loan isn't a standard transaction, therefore there's no default form, therefore it used the journal entry, the last thing used if there's no other form applicable. Going into the journal entry, there it is, debits and credits being used, closing that back out, scrolling up, other side, balance sheet down here in the opening balance equity. Boom, shakalaka, shakalaka. Okay, I'm st I gotta stop saying, I don't know why that's in my head. So I think this was this one, right? So yeah. So now let's uh, let's just double check our numbers. This is where we stand at this point in time. Our opening balance have been input. We only have an issue now with the equity down here being messy. It should be. That's what I hope is the case. But the total equity is 77,896, which is correct. It's just broken out funny like. It's just broken out funny like. And then our income statement has stuff in it for the, not from this round but from the prior presentations of 5500 but that's in the prior period i'm not worried about it because it's going to roll into the equity so no problem it's going to be nothing uh going forward after the cutoff of january 1st 2023 i'm going to open up one more report right clicking on this duplicating the tab that being the trial balance because i think that's the easiest way to check the numbers let's go to the reports on down below I like to just type in up top the trial balance, the trustee trial balance, the trustee TB, just type in T-R-I-A-L balance and then open it. So if I run this for 010123 to 123, run it. I was running. Why? Cause Jenny told me to. Jenny. Okay. That's from Forrest Gump. Anyways, this is what we have. So if we do the side-by-side -side comparison, checking account, 25,000, accounts receivable, 20,500, inventory, 2008, we've got the 7,500 accumulated depreciation, 7,500 furniture and equipment, 15,000 accounts payable, the visa at the 1,000, the loan payable at the 22,000, and then this mess down here that should add up to 77, 896 if i pull up the trusty calculator to see if it d indeed does do that calculator for some calculations you got the seven two three nine six plus i'm adding these two the five five oh oh there's the seventy seven eight nine six and if i do a range uh change to to uh to actually it's in i'm in 2023 if i change this to 2022 01 01 to 12 31 22 run it then you'll you'll have the same numbers down here you should right 25000 and then down here you've got kind of the mess so now down here the mess is including the opening balance equity 723996 plus the 20,500 income minus the expense of 15,000 because the, the income statement accounts are included on the income statement. But when I roll over to the first day of the following year, these income statement accounts will roll into the equity account. And I don't care what happens prior to the cutoff January 1st, 2023 with regards to the income statement accounts because they're in the prior accounting software. So if I change this one day up, 010123 to 01 so let's just say 1231 123123 and run it now quickbooks rolled over uh the income to retained earnings that's where the 5005 is at and then i've just got this mess of opening balance equity which isn't a proper account i don't want to keep it in there i just need to do a journal entry taking it out of there putting it into the retained earnings retained earnings isn't the proper name for a sole proprietorship so i could then just rename retained earnings to a sole proprietorship type name for the equity account which would be like owner's equity or something like that then we should be good to go we'll do that in a following presentation and then we will go from there